Welcome everyone to another episode of the Sovereignty of Scotland. So guys, today what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be doing uh, damage from last episode. Where we basically just sit here and watch as we try to figure out if we what our next moves are. As we try to guess if England is weak enough for us to attack or not. It sounds like a very boring proposition and trust me, it really does sound like that. But it's the best we can do. Um, also, there's been some talk about going to war, and while well, I'm not opposed to war, uh, Castile has announced a new rival. France, oh wow, they just, they just all exploded into hatred of each other. Okay, so, um, hmm, okay, so this is how I see it, people. I don't have to go to war with England anytime soon, oh shoot. That is not good. France just revoked its guarantee on me. Which doesn't make any sense because they're literally my best buds. Why would you do that, friends? I thought we were friends. No. So they're probably not going to like me for a little bit more. Oh my goodness. And so, what we have to basically do as the independent nation of Scotland is we have to basically first get our economics back together from our Ish, the, let's say war for a war for better chances of independ of sovereignty. Let's say that. Let's call it the war for better chances of sovereignty. And what we are basically going to do from here, guys, we're basically going to try to start building and looking out to see if the British are ever weak enough to for us to attack. You know, if the British ever miss mishap on like attacking somewhere, if they ever like. You know, forget where they were going, or the troops just magically all disappear. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. Let's just say that, you know, helping ourselves out. Let's see. The fleet costs, maintenance has a current mate. Trade value. The fleet will add. This will increase our trade value to for profit of. Alright, Northern Trade Node would be much better, so that increase our profit to 0.24. Alright, and Canuck wants to be a little bit more friendly. Second Legitimacy, that's good. And, yeah, we're just trying to make sure we don't die. <laughs> uh, we don't need to keep our maintenance up so high, but apparently our economy is not exactly the greatest, so we cannot support very much. But I knew that already. Because I have played an already game of this. Like England declared war upon their enemy, they cite conquest, that's their main goal. Okay. So, with any luck, what Britain will do, and this means with some, what I mean by with some luck, I mean with a lot of luck. Uh, Britain is obviously actually swimming in manpower right now, so we should actually not deal with them. Because right now they're actually not weak at all, and they actually could kick a lot of, um... They could, they could destroy me if they wanted to. Very, very easily. So, I suggest, my suggestion to myself is that I think what I'm going to do is wait for the, um... I'm going to wait for the French to have the ability to declare war again. Which will be... In... Until nine years from now. Once that ability has been reached. Also... I want to know, could, would the, uh, oh yeah, I have no diplomat to send. Let's see. Uh, would the French join in, I mean, a little conquest of Norway, maybe? Just like a little conquest? I mean, I wouldn't do much, I just, nah, they, 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 they're they not even interested. Holy shoot, what the heck, Denmark got an alliance, they are allied with Brandenburg and Muscovy. Oh, wow, that's a scary alliance right there. Okay, so no, I'm not messing, I'm not messing with, uh, no way. De def definitely not gonna mess with Walt. No way. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Lollard heretics apparently in England or in Merth. Maybe we'll get lucky and have one of our states switch to uh to uh you know good old Irish lands. But you never know with England. You never know. So, we're basically just waiting to see what the British have to offer. I mean, technically right now we could go attack, but 
My main, my main, my main issue is that the fact he's allied with both Aragon and Portugal, two powers that vastly, vastly outweigh our own. They could instantly, whoa! Poland, you already annexed all the Teutonic Order. That overextension, though. Ooh, it's gonna be bad for you guys. All right, um. Hmm. Beginning games is actually more important to not do that. Because we wanna make sure that we get our technological advancements. So, I'm getting a little bit of, you know, income, interest, what happened. Let's get this right here. There we go. There we go. Just completely set my army tradition to zero, and it should be fine. Okay. But, yeah. We're basically waiting for the British to do whatever they want. But we should also try to be looking for other venues of expansion besides just that one. And let's see. Let's see. Just invest the rest of our points into this guy. Just so I make sure that he wins by a, a hell of a margin. Hmm. Let's see. We have a little bit of a expansion over here. Once there's... Alright. Harsh treatment this province now that now that the revolt is completely gone. And that should basically make it so that we basically core this province very nicely. And at some point in the future, this could actually... Irish could become an accepted culture and we could have a very good time with that. Whew. And we're just making some money right now. I'm going to try to repay back some of my loans so that we can gain some more money. My king, France declared war upon the enemy Burgundy, they site conquest. They calling me into this or hopefully not. Hopefully did the Spanish join in. No, the Spanish didn't make friends. Wait, who did Burgundy make friends with? Oh no. France made friends with, wait, wait. Oh good. I think I thought France made friends with Austria. I was like, oh no. That is probably the worst alliance I've ever seen in my life. A France-Austrian alliance. There would be no hope for my let's play after that. <laughs> oh like, there'd be no hope for me ever going into England. The Iberian wedding has happened. So that means Castile is now responsible for Aragon. Except I think Aragon still... No, they don't get to fight this war. Okay, I thought they were going to finish out the war and then... Go into, like, being all neutralistic and... You know... Into oneself. But apparently they just instantly go for it. Okay. And... What I believe we're going to do first, people... Is... Since we're in a very tight situation with England... I'm going to go more on offensive ideas. Actually, wait. We're going to have a really good... Who's our next king? Because it doesn't really matter with this king. This king's probably going to die at some point. But our next king is going to be really good with everything but, but military. Um, yeah. There's not really... Uh, but there's not really much I'd want to take with administrative. There's, I mean, there's a couple of things. But I mean, there's not really much I'd like to take with administrative. You know, I'm just going to go with what I was going to go with. Which is military ideas. Because I feel like if we get a good military going... In the early game, we could definitely, like, you know, that 30 army tradition plus maybe, like, a good fire general could, like, completely turn the war into our favor. Plus, you know, if we were to, like, make a general right now and he gets that leadership shock ability, you know, you know, the guarantee to have a leadership shock, that could be a really good turning point in this, in our career. But England's already has, like, three, ooh. But then that tactics advantage right now we could have against them is also good. Hmm. So many things. I think, I, I, I really do feel like I just have to wait. If I try to attack and do anything of note. Wait, how is Canuck beating me in technology? Okay, I feel like my Scottish pride is kind of, is kind of a little bit wounded here. A little tiny country like Canuck is beating me in technology. Wait. Oh, look. Wait, we're still behind. Wait, give me one second. One second. Wait, oh, one more second. Oh, wow. And now who became the leaders of the world in technology? Let me just do that. So maybe I look somewhat better. Uh, Bohemia, Savoy, and Florence. Or Florence, or Tuscany as it's called in this game. 
Okay, so that's became the world leaders in technology, people! You may worship them if you want to. They are great and sophisticated people. Okay, get this guy right here of Gilbert, because we can win him pretty easily. Alright, just have to get a little bit, that way England doesn't come to power. We also have to kind of think about who's coming to power right now. A Bohemia, Lithuania, Scotland. Really, no. If any of these guys got a cardinal, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't dethrone me, which is the good part. That's the way you. That's the way you play the cardinal game. You have to make sure that none of the cardinals or anyone that can go into your land and steal you. And I just became one of the most advanced and technological people in the world. I feel happy. Huh. And. England right now is at peace with a lot of different people, and they have the entire army. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait. Rebels are sieging up some of the country. This might be a somewhat good chance. No. Hmm. I'm neutral to this. But, anyways, what I think we should do is because since I can't actually get the uh, free claims that we usually get for like you know just being Scotland and usually get that advanced the front I'm gonna just get a you know claim on the Cumbria that way when I declare war on them at some point we're gonna be ready like in five years man five years these two states should be a good distraction for the uh, British all right yes we pay back all my loans Make money. Make me lots of money. Okay. Should be, yeah, but these two states right here should be a good distraction for the British. So when they siege up Merth, should divide up the troops. I'm also hoping that France will also, you know, tidy up the uh, British stronghold. Make the, make the British have to fight a little bit harder next time. And not just, like, let them peace out, like, instantly. That was kind of cheap. And, let's see. 18k, 19, uh, that's a, uh, they, the British are very powerful, let's, and I almost don't want to look at the stats, because I'm like, the British are very powerful, I don't even need to know that, okay, also apparently I have some kind of, uh, just keep spinning up until I get, if I need the bug, okay, you guys, go protect the northern sea route, yay, okay, Okay, why don't you guys just group up? Okay, everyone that's in the Northern Sea Route, group up. Because you guys are all annoying me with being all separate. Group up. Be part of it, yep. Group up. Group up. And now protect it all together. There we go. That looks like an organized bunch. Hopefully I didn't get a cog in it. I got a cog in there. So, let's get the cog out of here. Go right here. And then for the rest of you guys, for the rest of you guys, go protect trade in Northern England. I mean, Northern Sea. All right, there we go. Sorry, people, I had to get that worked out. And now that's worked out, we have the breaking of the dawn glass. I actually know what this event is because of last time. So, it's basically James killed somebody that we didn't like and we can decide if we want to take some land from them it's a ministry of power but take some 10 noble rebels in ulster which actually the rebels are in the exact place we would want them to be so give me like a month or a couple months of paying my troops okay this is going to be the, this is going to be the most awesome thing ever if i can manage this like seriously we can manage this this would be like we would pay back all the loans. Alright, we got our Carlos Belli, that's good. We also got Lannister Pretender Rebels. Not exactly the greatest thing in the world. Alright. Alright. And there's absolutely no better leader we could have. Two, three. This guy's slightly better. He's a two, three, one. And with that, spawn him. Right, let's try this. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. This is going to be close. Yay! And with that defeat, we officially destroyed whatever threat that those guys were going to have to us. Also, apparently I was making up mercenaries already. Kind of weird. Probably because of those two men I created. Which, now that I have them gone, 
should help should help the uh, creation process a little bit. Let's let's retry that. No, no, just create two regular soldiers. We have enough for that. Two regular soldiers. Destroy this. Destroy those guys in Ireland. Yes. All right. Yes, we want to make sure our, our Irish vassals are somewhat strong. We want to make sure they're both like two and three strong. And we're just going to sit here and regroup our troops. And Gilbert, we have gained another active cardinal. Yeah, we just did. Yes. Okay. So another active cardinal has come into our fold. We're going to support these two. Three active cardinals, guys. Three active cardinals. Okay. So if this guy, Scotland, were to die, we would have just enough to keep him busy. I mean, well, not keep him busy. We have just enough to keep him, like, going. Um, and let's see. The only people I have to worry about right now in power are the French and the, the Papal State. Well, actually, not even the Papal State. Just France. So, France really does become an issue. We may have to do a little backstabby stabby things with them in terms of cardinals. I wish we could. I wish we could actually do that in this game. Okay, and we're going to dec decrease this all the way to like 1.9. Making one point. Hey guys, we're making 1.9 ducats a turn. Yay! Okay, and no, it actually does make me really happy because we don't usually have that much power. And let's see. They still don't like us enough. Just keep improving relationships. They might eventually switch sides to us. And while our troops reinforce slowly but surely, but they're going to reinforce us eventually, we still have the mission to get the English to honor the Elude Alliance, which gives us, which all we have to do is just get a war with England. And then, we already got our troops right here. Oh man. That, that was a clever thing we did. Like, using that uh, chance, that means we're really ahead in terms of administration power. I mean, we could possibly, like, completely go 20 tiles ahead in administration because of how far we moved. Especially in beginning turns, this would be really nice. Hmm. Anyways, though, the British are definitely looking very, very strong right now. Like, they know how to defeat everyone. Glory to us, indeed. I like that event. It's just glory to us, and we say yes. It's indeed. It's glory. It's glory to us, and no one else. But, plus that 30 tradition. Oh, uh, our land morale would be insane if we had that tradition with us. And we have a cardinal we can invest in. Um... We're winning like every other cardinal by so much that it really doesn't matter. We can invest a little bit into this guy. Okay. I mean, we're literally winning all these other cardinals by like 22, 33. It's, it's very weird though. That's I'm, I'm very weirded out by the fact that I'm winning the papal seat. Like, there we go. And I have three cardinals all ready to be, you know, joining the cardinal ranks in the future. And... A new champion of the Joust. This man must gain a general. Oh my! Yeah, you're gone. <laughs> okay, so now we have God General Robert. The guy who will lead us into battle is Robert Malays. Um, and with that, I don't believe. Let's see. I have to go to leaders. Um. Best leaders of the world. Go short by country. Aachen, where's England? England, England, England. England only has a max of 4 6. Samuel Ho just made me feel sad. Like, I was thinking for a second we actually had an advantage, and then Samuel Ho, man. He just dashed my hopes right there. Just, just completely dashed them. Anyways, apparently there's some raiders and some privateers going on in the ports. Hmm. Not exactly surprised, I should say. Over here, we're winning all of our races. Pretty handily, may I add. 
Oh my goodness. All right. And with that, everyone, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.